It must be so. That if the post office is unsafe, cinemas are probably unsafe. Malls, churches, universities, our spaces, none of our spaces are safe anymore. 19-year-old Yanene Mwitiana was a fun-loving teen with her entire life ahead of her. A first-year student at the University of Cape Town studying cinema and media, she was characterized as having only known love by her family. Sadly, on August 24, 2019, her trust would be violated and her young life would be taken in the most brutal way. Her death would have women throughout South Africa protesting in the streets, yelling, am I next, and demanding a solution to gender-based violence. This is the story of Rianane Mwitiana. The murder that ignited a movement. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Cape Town, South Africa. Uyanene was born to Noma and Philip Mwitiana in East London, Eastern Cape. She was born in the East London neighborhood of Beacon Bay and raised there. She went to Hudson Park Primary School in Vincent, where she led the student council and won the Hudsonian of the Year title. Uyanene attended Kingswood College for high school, where she received her diploma in 2018. Soon after graduating from high school, she enrolled at the University of Cape Town to study film and media. Bianene loved fashion, shopping online, and receiving packages. August 8, 2019 was like any other day. Bianene was expecting a package, so she went to the Clarange Post Office, which was located on a busy road in the southern suburbs of Cape Town. She was informed by Leanda Bota, a 42-year-old employee working behind the counter, that her parcel was not yet ready and that he will notify her when her package arrives, so Bianene went home. Yanene received a notification on August 24 that her package was ready, so she headed back to the post office. The same employee that she spoke with the first time, Leanda Bota, informed Yanene that he was unable to accept her payment since the credit card machine wasn't functioning due to a power outage. In South Africa, power outages are a regular occurrence, a commonplace part of daily life that you would not even give them a second thought. Bota requested Yanene return later that day around 2 p.m. on a Saturday and he would be able to assist her then. What Yanene didn't know is that the post office would be closed and Bota arranged for his post office colleague, Saraya Abdullah, to leave work early so that he would be the only one still there. Yanene used Taxify taxi service to travel from her residence at Ross Common University student accommodation in Claremont to the Clarange post office, where she arrived shortly just after 2 p.m., when everyone else working at the post office had left for the day. When Ianene returned, Bota opened the door and let her in. She walked in with her head down looking in her bag to get the payment for her package, unaware that Bota was locking the door behind her and they were the only ones in the post office. Bota made sexual propositions towards her touching and grabbing her inappropriately. He could see that she was extremely terrified. He then violently seized her and sexually assaulted her twice. After Yanene attempted to flee and fought back, Bota beat her with a set of post office scales to stop her from screaming. After killing Yanene, Bota left the post office to a nearby liquor store to consume alcohol. He then went back to the post office to cover her body with cushions, a blanket, and a jersey. He left the post office for the day and returned the following day on Sunday in the morning. He cleaned the inside of the post office to remove evidence. He waited until it was dark, then he placed Yanene's body inside of a large mail bag. He drove her body to a place not far from where he lived and buried it. He then drove to a gas station to buy gas and then returned to burn the body. He hired a cleaner to clean his car to destroy any evidence. Two days after Yanene went missing, police on routine patrol discovered a body in a hole beside an unused railway track in the township of Linjaletha West in Kailitsha on Monday, August 26. The body was unidentifiable because it was burned beyond recognition. Family and friends were immediately worried when Yanene did not return home from the post office or answer any of their calls and texts. She was extremely responsible and this was unlike her. They contacted police and authorities started to retrace her last steps. The last time anybody saw Yanene alive, she was in Claremont getting out of a minibus cab in front of the Clarange post office. She was missing for nine days, during which time there was a massive amount of media coverage and social media exploded with everyone wondering where she was. 
It was at this time that the hashtag Bring Nene Home began to gain traction on various social media platforms. After speaking with family and friends as well as the taxi driver who drove Ianene to the post office, the investigation led police to the Clarence post office as they determined this was the last place Ianene was seen alive. Examination of the post office revealed traces of blood and lab tests found this blood to be a match to Ianene. Police zeroed in on Botha as the main suspect and he was the one who attended to Ianene and the last person working at the time of her death. Bota confessed to killing Uyanene and told police where they could find her body. This is the point where police realized that the unidentifiable body they found days earlier was likely the body of Uyanene. For Uyanene's family and friends as well as all of the people who helped search for her, this was devastating news. We are in immense pain. We are hurting that our friend had to be a part of those who die on a daily basis at the hands of gender-based violence. Our hearts are broken. But we know that Nene left fighting, and we are going to continue her fight. The news of Nene's death sparked mass protest and outrage. This is a man! The man who are here with us, we want you to stand with us. We want you to stand with us and join us in saying, enough is enough. We are treated of men taking advantage of us and thinking that they own our bodies and we're here to stop it. We're here for the government to make a change. Because people are saying that it's women's fault, women should look out for themselves, women should be more careful, but actually the perpetrators are the men and that's why we're here today. It's not her fault, but it's his. Botu was arrested and pled guilty to all charges. He was sentenced to three life sentences. South Africa has one of the worst rates of femicide or the deliberate killing of women and girls in the world when compared to other nations. Yanene was a fun-loving teen who had her entire life ahead of her. She had many friends and family who loved her. She should have had the chance to live her life. She was just going to pick up a package when someone took it upon themselves to take her life. No one would expect a person that society places trust in to violate that trust in the most terrific way. Her death is beyond tragic. My condolences to her friends and family and to all of those who are affected and continue to be affected by this senseless crime. Yanene Marutiana should be here. Her life mattered. Mm. I still don't know, yet I'm smiling. Mm. You trust the process. Mm. You cannot figure everything out on your Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.